ready to rock, huh? You ready to game? Ready to game two player style? I hear you, go your go girl. So if you if you are into the pie stuff like I am, um, and you're a guitarist and you can't figure stuff out uh, like me, um, I'm here to make a video to help you and then to remind me later on when I forget all this stuff on getting the Atari Ultimate Dual Fight Stick with trackball set up on an image that's already kind of made. Uh, I'm running the Virtual Man's 1.98 uh, Retro Bliss, I believe it's called. Uh, fantastic image. I'm waiting for the Supreme Team to release theirs so I can see uh, what their latest build is. But at this point, this is the one I love. And if you have an image that you kind of want to just throw this on all of a sudden, you might find some things not working properly. Uh, especially if you use a keyboard with a trackpad where you've created a mouse port within uh, the Raspberry Pi. So I highly recommend having just a, a wired keyboard when you're going to do a bunch of these moves. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier as, for, as far as setup. The other thing I do is I, I use a Logitech wireless controller for, the, for some of the games, for some of the console games and stuff. So I just kind of unplug stuff, but you can actually go in and assign to each game specifically if you were going to be playing this or if you're going to be using that controller or if you're going to be using like the Tron stick. And that was something else that was a little funny. The Zinmo encoder board that's in this, I had it wired up the exact same way as the Tron stick. And I was having a lot of compatibility issues with this being plugged in at the same time as that. And so I got in the habit of unplugging it, but then I figured out something pretty strange. Um, so I want to kind of pass on a couple of tidbits of information that I know about the Atari Ultimate Dual Fight Stick with Trackball that I got at Micro Center. So thanks for tuning in. Um, it's dangerous for me uh, where I live because I'm a guitarist and a gamer, and I live real close to a Micro Center and a Guitar Center, and... Uh, Yeah, so I end up with stuff like this, um, uh, and I got this at the beginning of the summer uh, when uh, kind of everything was locked down. They have a version of this with uh, a Raspberry Pi now, uh, so it's a little more expensive. Uh, these go on sale pretty regularly there as well, and they also have um, a scaled down version without the trackball, and then that same thing with the Raspberry Pi 4 in it, and it's different price points, of course, and different sale points. Um, but I want to dive into this real quick. I have it unlocked so I can show you a couple of things. You see it's, it pops open real easily. Um, I'll bring over some light and I'll change things here real quick. But real quick deep dive uh, into a couple of things that I did here to make this all kind of work for me. Okay, so real quick, I'm not endorsed by anybody. And none of this is paid for or it's promotional or any, in any sort of a manner. Um, but there's that Zinmo encoder I was talking about. Um, what I've done here is I've added another switch here. So I have the ground going just like any one of these. I have plenty of these little switches kicking around. So I just grabbed one and I have it. I traced the mode line on the Zinmo. It's going to be this on the player two spot. It's the bottom second row right there. So I traced it to that one, which turns the joysticks from analog to digital which was strange because my Zinmo Tron stick right over there, um, it, it it was wired up the exact same, except it didn't have, you know, some of these extra wires that they have included in here. So you see there's all these extra jumpers so you can actually access all the pins. So it's a good bargain because if I were to build this and buy all of their parts, maybe slightly cheaper sticks than what they sell and maybe a slightly cheaper ball but I, I'm not too sure it all looks like high quality stuff for the price point that you're getting compared to what you would have to buy if you if, from them if you bought it all in components so uh, this defaulted to a, the, a different mode than the other one. Oh shoot I think I just hit the button and now I'm probably not gonna be able to do anything let's see so yeah that's one of the things that happens when you it, when you plug in a couple of these sticks as you if you're trying to use this in conjunction with other Zinmo encoders, just be aware of that, that that mode was in a different configuration than what I was used to. So that's just something to think about. Uh, it's very strange. 
uh, something quirky. Hey everybody, it's Future Double. Sorry for the video interruption. I wanted to make sure that you added to your command line text on the boot partition this line, the second line there, and I'll include that text in an overlay here. This is how you do that. This is my uh, micro SD card from one of my Raspberry Pi 4s, and I'm going to put it here in my, my card slot. And what you're going to see pop up here in a second is just the boot portion of the image. And so in there, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff come over. It's hard to do this when I'm blocking the, the mouse. You're going to look for the command line text, and you're going to double click on that and edit it. And you see, I've already added it right here. There it is. You basically just come to the end of the text and hit space and then add that line and then you hit save and close it on out. I'm not going to make any changes here. But that and there's a guy named Drew Talks on YouTube and he goes through some of the things that you really need to do. He in fact also has um let's see what we got here. He has these two files and I'm going to share that video link right above me right now. But back to the video. Thanks. Quirky. Now the Virtual Man image that I enjoy running so much, some of his games that you want to run on trackball, he's not using an emulator that would be, uh, that will recognize the trackball. So you need to go in there and set that up a lot of times. So, and you want to make sure that you're able to do that within the Virtual Man image. So you want to go over to the options section here and you'll find similar things in pre-built images. This run command setting this one right there that you want to select see how I got there options system tools within the virtual man and then you'll see run command within that uh, see how I have the launch menu launch menu art and the joystick control all currently enabled so you can hit select and you'll get options to jump to a particular letter or somewhere within the alphabet. So now I'm in C. I have the volume down just because there's licensed music on here and I don't want to get hit with a with a, any kind of thing at all here. But the music is amazing on this image. I just love the music. V-Man, good job. So Centipede, when you go to launch it, now you can hit a button a couple of times to try to, to get in there and edit it. You got your default emulator for the arcade. Now, I believe he has it defaulted to uh, Final Burn Neo. Um, I've already gone through and changed it to 2003. Um, I must have changed something at some point. But now I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and launch the game. And that emulator has mouse support. 2000, I, I guess 2010 does as well. So now I can use the trackball as a mouse. I can add some coins. And that was the other thing. These were wired. Some of this stuff was wired just a little bit different for me, so I had to kind of make my changes. But, yep, see now? There we go. But see how slow... See how slow he is? So I want to make him go faster. And that's going to be sensitivity and, and control settings. And... Let's see if I have this keyboard. So here I have that wired keyboard plugged in. If I had the other one, it would have seen that trackball as a mouse. And that's a real problem. So yeah, on this one, on 2003, I hit tab and I can now go in here and I can adjust what I need. So analog controls is where I want to go. And see, that defaults down to 10. You see that? That's so low. So I'm going to bring that up. I know from doing this a few times that I like it around there, if not a little bit more, but I'll just go ahead and get there. So you want to go to the X speed, which is your left and right, and then make the sense. I'll bring the sensitivity up as well, probably around 70. And then same thing here with the Y. I'm going to match those numbers because I like it to feel even. So I'm going to go and make that 60. And then I go down here and make that 70. There we go. And then back out to the menu. 
And I just do that. I generate an XML deck. Somebody can tell me what it does, but at, it at least saves uh, my information in whatever strange way that it does. So now I can come over here and add some more coins because I'm dead. And now see, it moves a lot better. For me, it moves a lot better. It's, it's, it's a lot closer. And I'll sit there and tweak it, you know, make sure that it's the way I like it. But if you open up Centipede and several other trackball games in that image, you're going to have to do that alteration right there and make uh, the run command setting alter so that you can actually change the emulator for that, okay? And that's just a quick tip on how you do that. Um, if you're running a couple of different joysticks, if you're running this, if your intention was, like, I can take this over to one of my cabinets that has a USB port in the front of it that's going into my Pi, and I can add player three and player four with this and add a trackball to it. Um, so that's always kind of a nice little option to do. You can do this, but just something to remember that that encoder in there is going to be a little bit different than probably how yours is set up if you're using Zinmo. If you're not, no big deal. Uh, a lot of people ask, what's well, how, how about that trackball? What do you do with the trackball? Well, there's um, this one is USB. Um, so as you can see in here, I have gone ahead and I put a USB hub in here so that I can plug the mouse and the Zinmo encoders USB right into there and then I just dongle a little little guy right out of here and plug that in there and then when I want I, I swap out for the Tron one and then that's my Glenn's Retro Show Glenn you rock that's the Tron spinner I mean a Tron stick and the Atari spinner designed by Glenn drops right into a button slot um, so yeah, those are the things that I kind of did in order to get this set up. I changed the wires around. You want to make sure that if, if you've done anything that you actually go in there, if you want to do something like what I'm doing, if, if you want to use this with something else, you want to make sure your buttons are mapped properly because that will change everything. If they're not, you'll have conflicting button problems. Um, so I can, uh, we can look at a couple other things. <laughs> Oh, I love that sound. I love Robotron. So, twin stick game. This uses this stick for direction and this one for fire, which is why I wanted to show you. Um, a lot of images will have that defaulted uh, to what to the setting that you want. You can always go in and hit tab and go down to your inputs here for this game and then you can assign here your right stick, your right stick, right up, right down by selecting it and then moving the stick in the direction that you want. Um, it's also a setting within MAME, select X, whoops, select X will bring that up. And then it's an option within MAME for most of the for most of the MAME emulators, you're gonna see you're gonna see options like map right analog stick as buttons, dual joystick mode. I guess that's what it is. But I, I you know, so that's if you have a stick and then on your right side you only have button instead of a second stick. That's not what I need though. I can just run right in here and see. You can see I'm shooting one direction. I'm using this one to, to walk and I'm using this one to shoot. Gotta save the humans. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Uh, just, you know, I'm dead. So save the humans. And then kill the robots because, yeah, 2084 is on its way. They could have called it Robotown 2020, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, so that works great. I love Robotron. It's one of my favorite games. So here you can see it works really well for something like that. Um, so not just trackball stuff is awesome with this. Oh, you, you, you. <laughs> Such good music on that image. Um, so yeah, like Crazy Climber. I can't even remember if I have that set up for something like that. I think Crawl is a twin stick. But like games like Crazy Climber, 
or you use two sticks. This is great for that, even if you're you play on your own. So my daughters and I love using the trackball for golden tea. That's just a blast. It's so much fun to play golden tea. Yep, so twin sticks works. Crazy climber right out of the right out of the uh, box for V Man's oh image. Oh gosh, dude. Here, come on, get yourself over. I just can't play. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so it is one of the reasons why I like the V-Man images. A lot of this stuff is just already set up to play. Mute. So down here I have the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and that's running Virtual Man's image off of that two terabyte drive there, plugged into a USB. That That's powered. It's a little hub that's powered. Um, and it's just a 2.0 hub. So I just use that out front for controllers. Logitech controller is uh, there and there's a little dongle um, and then they have a stand they actually have a real stand with artwork now for this thing and it looks really good but I made my own I think if you saw my room walk through you saw that so those are a couple of quick tips on um, on how to kind of work with the Atari ultimate dual fight stick it's a mouthful, right? Um, you're going to want to go in and change some of the emulators th that are compatible with the trackball. And then if you're running multiple things with the mouse uh, and a spinner, uh, et cetera, et cetera, a, key, uh, a little keypad with that mouse pad, and you want to leave all that plugged in, I recommend you check out Game Room Solutions. I'll leave a link to their video that helped me out. Uh, in the description here but once again the Atari 2600 fight stick I really really like it I've spent a lot of time with it uh, just mostly on the Pi 4 I have not plugged it into anything else not the PS3 um, not uh, not any of the my Xbox even but from what I understand it should work just fine uh, you know I, I, I know the Zenmo stuff is compatible with a lot of stuff so yeah thanks for thanks for checking out my quick overview of the Atari dual ultimate ultimate dual the dot the Atari ultimate dual fight stick from Micro Center it's really a treat to play uh, some of these old games with a real trackball please make sure you like subscribe and share if you enjoy this content, you know somebody or some place that might enjoy something just like this. Thanks a lot for watching.